When thinking about dating someone of the opposite sex, what are some of the things that Christians to look for? Well, in this video, we're going to be talking about dating God's way and giving you some advice on what to look for. So stay tuned. What's up everybody, I'm Ronnie and Mel and on this channel we give you weekly tools and inspiration to help you find God and walk with Him in your daily life. So if that's something you need, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. So on today's video, we are going to be talking about what to look for in the opposite sex. If you're a guy or a girl, what should you be looking for? So since the guys are supposed to pursue the girls, let's start with you. So Ronnie, what are some things that you think as Christians wanting to date someone, what should we be looking for? I say the first thing, and obviously I think we all would know this, but I just don't want to skip it, is the first thing we want to look for is that we're pursuing another Christian. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that and just bring that up um, is because we know we get tons of emails um, and there's so many Christians in relationships with non-believers and even Christians married to unbelievers. Mm -hmm. So we know that um, that just happens out there in, in, in the world. and. Uh, but I think if, you, if, if you're not dating someone, you're not married, and you're pursuing someone, that should be the first thing on your list is, I want to pursue a Christian. And I think the Bible is clear on this. In 2 Corinthians 6.14, it tells us not to be unequally yoked. And I just want to explain what that is, because I know we have a lot of new believers on this channel. And when I first read that, I didn't know what unequally yoked meant. So let me just clarify what that means. So back in Jesus's day, they would, this yoke is where they, it was kind of like a beam, and they would hook two animals together and they would plow together or pull a load together, and they were, they were connected to each other. So the, the idea was you would want animals that were equally in size, equally in strength, so when they moved, they would be able to move forward straight and get the job done. And now if there was an unequal, an unequal yoke, you know, one animal would be smaller or with less strength than the other animal, and what would happen is the stronger animal would dominate the, the weaker animal, and they couldn't walk straight. They actually would just walk in circles and the job would never get done. Right. So I think that's just a good picture of, of what the scripture gives us about looking for someone with an equal yoke. Mm -hmm. um, so first, I would say Christian, and then second, uh, equal yoke. And, and I want to just even throw in there because I know when I became a Christian and started just getting to know guys, there were a lot of guys I felt like I met that they were Christian, but they still, in a sense, weren't on the same page as I was. Mm -hmm. As far as I wanted to be wholehearted and fully going after the Lord, but there were Christian guys out there, but they, they, they didn't have that same intensity and that same desire as I did. So I think even part of being equally yoked is not just, do you profess Christian? Okay, good. Mm -hmm. But it's, are we on the same page as far as our dedication to obedience mm -hmm. and our desire to truly mm -hmm. pursue the Lord. So. Yes, I agree with that for sure. So kind of like what you're saying is, is almost like in maturity mm -hmm. and, and like where people are in their spiritual walk. And I, I think that's something that was very, next on my list. One, I want to pursue a Christian. And two is I want that Christian to have Jesus as the priority of their life. I want mm -hmm. them to be Jesus as number one in their life. I want them pursuing them with, like genuine. I want someone that genuinely loves Jesus and uh, is going to pursue them with all their heart. So I think that is a very, uh, another good thing to look for. Like, where is Jesus on the priority list? Right. And you can, I think you can see this, you know, you can go out on a date or two and you can really tell where people are at in their walk mm -hmm. and in, in, in their journey with, uh, on, on their faith journey. And, uh, you know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And I, that's one thing I believe. When Jesus does something in your heart and when he touches with you, he's on your heart, he's on your lips. And it's, it's like you talk about him, you're excited about him, you talk about the scriptures. And that's just one thing that even when we were dating, that was that we knew. Like I, I knew right off the bat where Mel was in her relationship with Jesus because that's all she wanted to talk about. Right. She didn't want to talk about nothing but Jesus in the Bible. So it was very clear to me that Jesus is high up on her priority list. So I think that's something that all Christians to seek um, is, is a, a believer who is on fire, like, like serious about the faith, not just has the title and just going on with life and, you know, going to church is not a priority, not, you know, not reading the scriptures and praying and none of that's really a priority. I would seek somewhere where you can see that there's real fruit 
in their life and they're seeking Jesus wholeheartedly. So, and I saw that in Mel like right off the bat. Yeah, and I, just to tell even my story, the day that we reconnected, I mean, I knew Ronnie was a Christian. I just didn't really know where he was at, but I was actually really surprised just throughout the day seeing different things. And so what it was, was he was having a Veterans Day outreach at his house. And so he does motocross. They had a bunch of his motocross guys out at his house doing this Veterans Day show and outreach at his house. And then he was going to preach the gospel after and a couple other people. And so when I came there and we reconnected, I was just there coming to help serve. There were a few things throughout the day that I just noticed in you mm. that it really just struck me that, oh, he really does love God. He's not just a Christian. And it, sh it just showed me that. One was the way that you were kind to everyone else at this event. Just your kindness, your gentleness. It was so different from the other guys that were just there because like, you were there for Jesus, and I could tell that. Mm -hmm. Two, you were serving. You were running around trying to make sure everyone had what they needed. Three, I remember all of us, we got together afterwards and just prayed that, you know, the seeds that were sown that day, that, that people would really come to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember we were all gathered there, and you were wrestling because you were like, man, this morning in prayer, I felt like I was supposed to share this, but then I... I, I you know, I shared this and I was like, wow. So he actually is a, a man that before he has a busy day, he goes and he prays to the Lord. Like he actually has a secret life and a, and a prayer life with God. That was important to me. And then when we were praying, you were praying the scripture. You were, and I was like, he's actually a man of the word. Mm -hmm. So it, to me, I could see that your relationship with God was priority and that you were really truly living to know him mm -hmm. and to help others get to know him as well and so those were some of the things that it made it clear to me okay he's he's really genuine about his faith it actually matters to him it's important to him and he's seeking something in god that mm -hmm. provoked me so yeah so i i would i think that's great and that that's what we should we should seek people that are serious about their relationship with mm -hmm. jesus i think that's super important and uh, just the last thing i want to uh, bring up is I think we should we should pursue someone with vision the Bible does tells us without vision the people perish and uh, we should we should desire someone that, even for even especially for women looking to a man the mm -hmm. man's a spiritual leader so the man should have a vision for where he's going what he's called to how he's going to lead especially mm -hmm. like if you guys are going to be dating and then leading towards marriage so I really think it's important for women but yeah, man, like, like I knew, like you knew what you were called to. And I was attracted that she had a vision for her life. She knew what her calling was. She knew what she was supposed to, and she was doing it. She was walking yeah. in it. I was attracted to that. So vice versa, I think men and women should seek people with vision. They, they know where they're going. They know what they're called to, and they're pursuing it. So, right. I, I mean, like I said, I was a, that attracted to me, or attracted me to you because you knew what you were called to, and you were, right. you were going after it. Yeah, and I think it's, it's both. It's having a vision in where you wanna go in God, like you have a focus and a drive that you are pursuing knowing Jesus, loving him, and a vision in how you want to serve him because he's called all of us to, while we're still living on this earth, to go and make disciples. And that can look like a million different things and that's okay. But just the fact that people do have a vision and they are truly desiring to steward their life in a way that serves Jesus, those things, they're, they're important Super when important. considering, <clears throat> do I want to date this person or not? Yeah, and then as you leave through the dating relationship and you go lean more towards marriage, you used to see if the, your vision and your purpose kind of merge. Mm -hmm. And I know we, she straight up asked me, you had a conversation, she just called me out. She said, if we were to get married, so we were already dating at this point. She said, if we were to get married, or <laughs> if we were to get married, what would our ministry look like? And then I had to tell her, I mm -hmm. said, I could picture us being mobile, uh, speaking at different churches, not necessarily being a local Sunday pastor, leading a local con congregation, but being mobile, speaking, using social media as a platform. And I actually said, like, I could see like YouTube, having a YouTube channel and using that as a platform to preach the gospel. And she said, okay, I can see my life you know, that aligns women. with yeah. what God had already told me about my life. Mm -hmm. so, so we prayed about it. We said, okay, let's pray. Uh, like, and obviously this is 
we were already a little bit farther down the road in dating and so we prayed and it was the very next day when we got the word mm -hmm. uh, about the YouTube uh, channel right but when you're just considering dating mm -hmm. someone just looking for is this person someone I would potentially date I don't think it's necessarily I think you're gonna find out what your callings are in the dating season but beforehand I think just as long as they have a vision to, to that look. you can respect and that you're like it provokes you mm -hmm. I think that that's enough to just start to get to know that person in in mm -hmm. a dating relationship if that's where you guys feel like you're led to go so and if the vision is just pursuing Jesus wholeheartedly like that's still they know where they want and they're going for it so Absolutely. I think that's awesome so and so I just want to speak specifically to girls women out there who are looking to decide if a man is someone that you want to date. I think there's a few things even for women that are sort of specific to you that you should be looking for. I think one is because the man is a leader, if it were to lead into dating and marriage, since the man is the leader, is he living a life that you respect? Is he living a life that you think you could follow? Mm -hmm. And because I feel like we get messages so often and emails so often where it's actually the woman that is way stronger spiritually mm -hmm. and they are in pain because the man is not leading. And so we don't want you guys to get yourself into a situation where you fall in love with someone but then you realize, oh, they actually, like, they can't lead me because that will cause you pain if it leads to marriage or things like that. So. Just make sure that the man who is the head of the household, who is the leader, is leading you somewhere that you actually would want to follow. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. Yes, because what we've noticed is when the man's not leading, the wife has a hard time su uh, submitting. Mm -hmm. If, the, if the husband's not doing his role, it kind of gets her role out of order. She's like, I can't submit to him when he's not doing. Therefore, then I have yeah, to so lead. Just, and then the order that God yeah, put in place gets, is. Gets out of order. Completely out of yeah. order, right. I think there's a few other things too that you can even just do. One thing that I liked about Ronnie was that he had a good reputation with his friends, with church leaders. They they knew the genuineness of his of his soul. Like he wasn't just putting on this act for me, trying to look really holy, look trying to win the Christian girl. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It wasn't just a show. Yeah. <laughs> people actually said those things about him. Like he really was like that in real life. And so I think that's another important thing of Just how do those people, how do other people view that person that you're wanting to date? How do, what is their reputation and who they really are? Cause that's, that's an indicator of who, mm -hmm. who, who you're gonna be dating. Mm -hmm. And one more thing for you ladies too, in Ephesians five, it says that Husbands are to love their wives as Christ loves the church and gave himself up for her. So when you're looking for someone that, that potentially wants to date you, I think an important question to ask is, do you see them laying down their life for others as Christ did for us? Because if they're not laying their life down for others, chances are they're not gonna be very good at laying down their life for their wife either. and. I mean, that verse is probably one of like the hardest verses in the Bible because how can you love me the same way that Jesus loves me? I mean, that's a huge mm -hmm. high calling. Mm -hmm. But one thing I just want to encourage you girls with is the more that you grow in knowing Jesus and knowing his character and knowing what his, he's like and in knowing the ways that he interacts with you and your heart and the way he protects you and loves you, the more you will be able to recognize it in a man. And so it, it was the character and the nature of Christ that I saw in Ronnie that attracted me to him. And so I just encourage you girls, get to know Jesus and you will easily be able to see if that man will be able to love you like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's good. <laughs> and it takes Jesus to love like Jesus. That's, Absolutely. As she was saying that verse, like, what a high calling for the men that lay down his life and love his wife as Christ loved the church. You can only do that through Jesus. 
through the Holy Spirit. Like it takes Jesus to love like Jesus. So that's the cool thing is like we don't have to do it on our own and our own strengths. We can allow the Holy Spirit to do it through us. Absolutely. And because in a dating relationship, I think it's it's sad, but I think in our day and age, we have sort of a an expectation in dating that even physically the girl has to kind of like give in to what a guy wants to do. And that has hurt so many girls. But if he's truly loving you like Christ does, he will want to protect you and your purity yeah, awesome. rather than take from it. And so I think that that's really important as well. Yeah, and just because you brought this up, I, I think on both sides, that is huge. Is I'm huge. glad you brought it up because we didn't even talk about this. Mm -hmm. um, purity is huge. And I mm -hmm. think both men and women should look for a partner that wants to stay pure. Mm -hmm. Like if that's huge. If one wants to stay pure and the other one doesn't, that almost should, it's it's going to be tough. Like find someone who is it's like no, we're walking in purity and we're going to stay pure. Like that's mm -hmm. huge. Like when and when me and her were on the same page with that, like we we were able to walk it out all through dating, all through courting till our marriage night. So mm -hmm. I, I would say look for someone who has that desire to stay pure because that is big. Yeah. And the way that we were able to figure that out is because we took a season where we were just friends and I was able to fight for Ronnie as him being a brother in Christ, not a boyfriend, mm -hmm. not a potential husband, but as a brother of Christ, I was able to get to know him and want to fight for his purity. I didn't want to be a stumbling block in his life. I wanted to protect mm -hmm. that. And so when you're looking for someone to date, you want to find someone that truly understands who, that you are a son. Mm -hmm. Like you are a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. And we want to protect each other. We want to cover each other. We want to mm -hmm. just build each other up in the Lord, mm -hmm. not necessarily just get what we want out of dating. It's really help each other get what Jesus wants from mm -hmm. our lives. And one more thing I just want to make sure I say, because to be honest, before I started dating Ronnie, before we got reconnected, I had this entire list of, I guess, kind of expectations of what the person I would date had to measure up to. And really the only person that ever could measure up to that <laughs> would be Jesus himself, <laughs> because I think I just had unrealistic expectations of other people. I think, I, I mean, I think I had unrealistic expectations of myself too, to be honest, but just want to throw that out there that we don't want you to settle in any ways, like find the values and the things that you, you want to look for in someone that you would potentially date, but also know that everybody's on a process. And so like Ronnie, he wasn't perfect in everything that he did, but I saw seeds in him of genuineness. And, and I know that when, when God sees a yes in someone and there's a willingness to learn and grow in areas, that they'll, they'll get to where God wants them. He doesn't have to be perfect in it today, but he has to be working towards that. And I have to see fruit of that. So just want you to know that it's good to have a set of values that you that you desire, but just don't have them too unrealistic that nobody can meet them. And therefore you will never date because <laughs> only Jesus can meet those because we're all in a process and, and God will get us there if we're willing. So just look for the willingness in their heart. So we want to hear from you guys. So what are your thoughts? What are the, some of the values that you look for in a guy and a girl? Let us know down below. So as always, we hope this continues to help you on your journey to find God and walk with Him, and we will see you next time.